presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Ben in San Jose. Ben, what's going on, brother? Hey, Tom. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? I just wanted to thank you and your team and everything. I've been using your technique with the 10-minute charts, watching the VIX, and uh, just making a fortune here on the futures. Isn't it interesting? Interesting. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's wonderful. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate okay, it. Okay, man. Have a great one. Have a safe one. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I will be with you this week. I'm getting the chart into the den now. Let's take a look. We have the ES Mini trading about 43.87. We uh, had some big movement to the upside today. Uh, topping out about uh, 12.30 in the afternoon, and we are on the retreat back down. We'll see how that shakes out by the end of it. Um, we got up to 44.23, uh, trading at 43.87 currently. Uh, the Russell Futures trading at seven, uh, 1,778, 17.78. Um, again, big movement, not as much as a crawlback as the ES Mini did, uh, but a crawlback regardless. Uh, from its highest of, uh, point of the day. And Q's trading at 1,595. Same kind of motion we're seeing. And we'll see it again with the Dow as well. And we're getting back to the uh, open. We are moving back towards there. So we'll see how we shake out today. Um, might be kind of closing a little bit low today, but we will see how that goes out. Gold kind of staying sideways here at 1935 at 70 cents. Silver at $23. We have copper at $3.57. And then light street crude, I'm moving too much. We're at $86.95. Some big volume on the up about uh, maybe half an hour ago. And then the Brent trading at about 90 bucks. The dollar still sticking at 106.20. Any movement down from here is gonna be really positive for the rest of the market. Um, so we'll have to see Again, how that shakes out as well. QQQ trading at 367. Google, 140. Meta, we're at 322. Disney, 8570. Apple, we'll talk a little bit about them today. They are losing some market dominance in China. Uh, iPhone 15 sales have not been so good over there. We had Tim Cook uh, visit uh, China in the midst of all of this. And let's buy it for 35. You take a look at NVIDIA. They are down a little bit. About 23%, or excuse me, 23 points right now, about 5%. Uh, so what essentially happened is the U.S. is enforcing new trade restrictions with China, regarding China's ability to get more uh, cutting-edge chips. Uh, the new restrictions are designed to close loopholes on export controls announced a year ago. Uh, the current administration said it is seeking to prevent China's military from importing advanced semiconductors and chip manufacturing equipment. Tighter controls will target NVIDIA's A800 and H800 chips, uh, which the company created for the Chinese market after the initial U.S. trade restrictions last October. Uh, these chips are less capable than NVIDIA's top-of-the-line graphics processors uh, for artificial intelligence. Earlier trade restrictions prevented semiconductor uh, supplier ASML. They do all the lithography um, from selling its advanced lithography gear to China. Uh, that would allow China to develop these chips over there. And then, uh, you know, let's take a look at AMD real quick here. So NVIDIA's primed, and why they're so strong is because their chips are used to train the new models, but AMD's chips can be used to just kind of maintain them. So down marginally uh, on the daily. I'm going to pull this out to yearly. And we have 132 at the high here, and we uh, had a steady decline to pump up into 100 on a not significant volume and trading in this range really of 110 to 100. Um, you know, again, the idea if like NVIDIA gets hit very hard on this, it's two ways to look at this, right? Like NVIDIA again is, has very, very cutting edge semiconductors, right? And processors and all this. That, like I said, is being used to train these models, whereas AMD just as used uh, in order to support them, if that makes sense. So NVIDIA obviously can get hit pretty hard, right? If you're cutting state-of-the-art kind of training chips 
NVIDIA gets hit hard on that. If you're cutting all kind of chips going, uh, NVIDIA obviously get hit, gets hit hard, but then AMD gets hit hard as well. Um, not a lot of action with this stock. Um, obviously, you have some pretty intense movements up, down from a low in September, uh, about 94.12. Low of the year is trading about $80, $79 around here. Um, but again, no, no substantial volume. I, I think really the, the person, the entity that got the most uh, fame out of this whole AI kind of uh, rush would have been NVIDIA. So, yeah, it's something to take a look at regarding that. NVIDIA is still obviously pretty strong. I mean, a 5% decrease um, after its pump up in about May is uh, not, you know, anything bad unless you're like buying at these higher levels. Um, but, you know, if you've been holding prior to that, uh, you're still sitting pretty and you can probably absorb some losses like this. Um, so that's what's going on in the chip sector. Uh, we talk a little bit about retail sales. Um, did very well in September. There's no consumer slowdown in sight, according to it. Obviously, um, that is not what the Fed has been wanting, um, but yet the uh, consumer persists. The retail sales rose about 0.7% in October, uh, excuse me, in September from the previous month. Uh, more than double the Wall Street estimates for a 0.3% growth. Sales, excluding auto and gas, increased 0.6% above estimates for a 0.1% increase. Uh, and that was compiled by Bloomberg. Uh, the August sales were revised up to 0.8% from previously reported 0.6%. Uh, so this obviously gives a snapshot in consumer spending at a time when economic data has been coming in largely stronger than expected, despite the Federal Reserve's interest rate hiking campaign uh, as a central bank seeks to cool inflation. And things really are still getting expensive. So I'm curious to see where this spending is coming from. And, and I, would, I would reckon, you know, a lot of this more than people would be comfortable with is coming from essentially credit. And uh, so I'd be interested to see kind of that report. Uh, Jamie Dimon on Friday uh, noted that the consumers and businesses are generally remaining healthy. Uh, their cash buffers are being spent down. That's something to keep in mind as well. Uh, the Bank of America CEO Brian Moynihan described the state of the U.S. economy as one in which the consumer is still spending ahead of last year, but is continuing to slow. And that is... Uh, True Bank of America as well, they, they popped up about 10%, um, but they are a warning of a slowing spending by Americans. Uh, the Charlotte NC Bank earned a profit of about $7.8 billion, or $0.90 cents a share, um, which is $0.13 cents better than Wall Street had expected, according to a survey of analysts. Uh, it also tops last year's $7.1 billion in profit. Uh, most of the higher profits came from higher interest rates on loans, of course, uh, with net interest coming in about uh, 14.4 billion compared with about 13.76 uh, billion last year. Give me a second here. Get my computer all caught up. Okay. Take a look here. Oh, and we got the break. Well, when we get back, folks, talk just a little bit more about Bank of America and the banks in general. We have Basil and we have Tim Ord on today, which is fantastic. So, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup. I believe we have Basil Chapman on the line. Basil, are you with us? Yes, I am. Hi, Jacob. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you. Good. What are we uh, taking a look at today? First, how's the weather where you're at? I, I know you're on a little trip right now. Yeah, it's good. Very nice. Very nice. Thank Lovely. You. Good deal. Yes. So I thought I'd just uh, give you a little uh, kind of an overview of just exactly where I subscribe to the opening call, are, where, what we're doing. Um, so on the 1st of August, the Dow hit a high of 35,679, and we had one indicator that the day before was giving us a signal to say that there should be a, a sharp turnaround. So we were, were fortunate right on that day to go short, and we are still short. But within the context of the down move that we've had, because I had the, the, the exact same signal that gave the sell uh, signal, gave a buy signal on the very short term. And the reason why I say short term is that if you're looking at this chart I'm showing here on the left, you'll see that this bar right here coincides with the on balance volume making a low but at the same time this middle chart that's the weekly chart there's this little line right here is pink and that means that the nine period moving average has gone under the 14 period moving average it hadn't done that since may and uh since well the last time was uh in may i think it was the second week of may so to me, that is significant. That's the reason why I'm calling this a short-term rally, and then we probably have to do some kind of retesting, just where is going to be the issue. But at this particular point, I do see uh, the, the signs that this upside is limited to a certain extent, and then we've got to go sideways. And to go with that, the SMHs, which is the semiconductor index, um, this has been, as far as I'm concerned, as long as I've been watching the market, I, I always say that wherever the semiconductors go, there's a really good chance that the uh, the market itself is going to follow in that direction, either the semis lead or they're kind of just behind. In this particular case, they made an all-time high on the 31st of July, 161.17. This SMH is a symbol. This is the Van Eck Semiconductor ETF. Well, that high was just two points above the high of November. And it's incredible. If you look at this chart on the right, that's a monthly chart. Look at that V-shaped pattern that went back to almost the exact price within two points. It's actually less than two points. 
and then it turned down. So we were fortunate using the same techniques uh, two days after the high was made within two points of the all-time high, we went short the semiconductors, and then we used the three times short SOXS as a trading vehicle. We're completely out of that, but we've still got the short SMHs, and you can see by this chart on the left, look at this these little trend lines here. This is like a little mini channel, and that's... It, I call that a repellent zone. See how the price keeps getting repelled? So you can see the semiconductors <clears throat> are somewhat weak over there. And the weekly chart is still looking good. The uh, 9P moving average hasn't turned down. So within that context, I think what we're looking at is a situation where the larger trend, which is still down, has this, I'm calling it at this point, a counter trend rally. And I'm watching very closely to see the semiconductors. And even today with uh, with bad news about the semis, it's only down two at 147. I, I would say that if you start to trade under 143, that's serious. So at this particular point, I'm watching it very closely. Um, and as I say, it got repelled. And then I'll do this in my show tomorrow in the Tiger Technician's Hour at 10 Eastern Time. I'll show the, the exact movement of the, the blue lines and the green lines all within this channel. It's just amazing how that works, how you can get a diagonal line and somehow that line knows that it, it's proportionately lower and yet I can understand a horizontal line if you had 20 and you keep hitting 20. But this has gone from 161 to 167 and then 150, uh, 54. It's just it's amazing how markets do that. So anyway, as, as it stands right now, using this as a counter trend rally and we did for subscribers we bought a gold stock on friday because at this particular point you can expect that gold uh, being the currency of fear is still uh, it's active it's not really pulling back very much off this spectacular friday and one other thing that we're looking at is the dollar i'll just show you the dollar right here it's holding steady and for subscribers we've been long the dollar for a very long time still long and it's in this channel in the daily chart. You can see how beautifully it's held inside the, the channel lines. Then it went out of it. And right now it's it's indicating that it might want to store right here. So I'm watching these very close, the, these time frames. That's the daily, the weekly, the middle, and the monthly. Because look at the, the one in the middle. This is the weekly. That nine period moving average is very strong over the 14. And the price is way above. And the MACD that I use... It's very strong, the stochastic's at 88%. So, so far, the dollar's get, not giving me any signals in the intermediate term that it's turning down. Very short time, we're going to be watching it. Did we lose Basil? Yes. Oh, hello. Sorry, I think your mic might have cut out, but it sounds like you're back, so please keep going. Oh, I, can't, I, I don't know where I got lost. No, uh, no, it was just like a second ago. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so we were the right dollar, there with you. Okay, good. So the dollar is 105 is key support in the short term. But the weekly chart is still very strong. And if I can just show you the, the gold right here, this is the GC contract holding very steady, just made a little triangle formation, but it's holding very well. The weekly chart doesn't look that good. And I, my contention is that if there wasn't this conflagration in the Middle East, that the gold, it was on its way down. This really kind of saved the day for gold. But as I say, I call it a currency of fear. And as long as that fear is there, gold is going to be in play. But it's still uh, got a lot of work to do for that weekly chart to improve. Very good. Very good. Yeah, the gold has been interesting uh, to me as well. Obviously, you had the dollar break a little bit. Um, and I feel like gold recovered quite a bit from like the 1870s. Um, up to what now? We're trading 1937. Yeah, 1937, and yeah. really with that, not that much of a pullback in the dollar. So I don't know. You know, this is the first time I'm really like, you know, this year I would say really beginning to understand the relationship between the two of them. And um, man, what a what a wild ride it is trying to figure that out. You know. Yeah, one of the things that you have to try to do, we've done that for about a year now, is that all those old relationships of oil rallying, and then that usually takes puts pressure on the market. Uh, the bonds uh, rallying means yields come down. That's really good for the market. Right. The dollar going up, uh, gold goes down. I think we might have lost Basil again. Oh, oh now we got you back. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, 
I won't move my head. <laughs> right, right. So, Stay very yeah. still. <laughs> Yeah, we never know with technology, right? So look at yeah. the VIX index. The VIX index is at 17. Um, above the uh, support level, you can see in the monthly chart, there's this huge support level at about 14, 13 to 14. Mm. We're above that, and actually the market's holding pretty well. So I, all these different relations, I would contend that if the volatility index on any particular day starts to push into the 22s or higher, You've got to be very careful of the market. Then the market will start to pull back very dramatically. Fantastic insight, Basil. Thank you as always. I hope you uh, enjoyed your time, and we will see you tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern time for the Tiger Technicians Hour. Sure. All right, Thank take care, you, Basil. Bye-bye. Right. Folks, stay tuned. We will be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have the ES Mini trading at 43.97, Russell at 17.81, and Q's at 15.219. And uh, the Dow futures at 34,126. I believe we have Tim Ord on the line. Tim, can you hear me? I sure can. can How you are you me? doing? Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yep, yep. I'm, Perfect. I'm good. I can hear you. Good. How are you doing? Good, good. Good, so, fantastic. Well, we got uh, your charts up here. The first one we're looking at is uh, on gold. I'm interested to hear what you have to say on this. All right. Uh, yeah, this, this is actually the gold chart 
and it goes back to a long time, 2005. And I put some cycle lines on there. There's a red cycle line, and there's a blue cycle line. And one, the red one's an eight-year cycle line, and the blue one's uh, a 16-year cycle line. Anyhow, over over the course of years, uh, the eight-year, uh, the eight-year and, and uh, 16 years, I've done a good job picking out uh, decent lows. And the last low was picked out in what 2016. That was when the eight-year and and the 16-year corresponded uh, right on the money. And now we have the eight-year coming in effect. And I presented this chart at least six months ago uh, on your on your program. And you know, late 2003 or 2023. Um, the eighth year cycle is going to hit a low where well, we're hitting it right now. And it seems to be lining up pretty well. And I did some Fibonacci uh, stuff on this chart from the low of 2016 up to the uh, high of 2021. The market gold itself, this is the uh, cash gold, only a trace at 38 38.2% uh, retracement. Uh, so that's a small retracement. If you retrace anything less than a half, a lot of times, this is at least a halfway point of the next move up. Uh, so we could see a powerful rally, I think, coming. we got the cycles about right for a rally. The Fibonacci relationship seems to be working out. Uh, the more times you test the high, you know, we tested that 2,000 high a little bit actually over that three times, probably the next time we go through. A lot of times you go through the third time. Uh, but the fourth time even gets a higher percentage that you'll probably break through that 2,000 level and head on up. Uh, the top window is the uh, RSI of uh, – this is actually a monthly chart. But when the RSI is above 50, usually that's when the uptrends happen. That's what I noted all in blue there. Uh, so we had a kind of a bear market uh, starting in 2012 down to this – 2016 low, that's when the RSI was below uh, um, 50, and in general it stayed above 50, and we're currently uh, above 50 right now, we're at 54.50, uh, so uh, we had a little dip here last year, but we got back, up, RSI got back above 50, so there's quite a bit of evidence that uh, important, something on a bigger time frame is about to happen, and this is on a monthly time frame. So uh, Fibonacci uh, say, you know, this is probably a halfway point of the move up. The uh, cycle work is is on for a, a move now. The RSI has been above 50 for the last uh, about year, I think, uh, the last August has hit that low. And so everything's kind of set. So let's, let's move on to um, the next chart, and that's gold. So gold... Um, it looks really bullish, um, bullish going forward here. So let's look at the next chart, chart number two. We got it right here, GDX ADP. Yep. And uh, um, this is uh, the monthly, the top one is the monthly GDX. Uh, and the uh, right, the bottom window is the monthly GDX up-down volume, and it's a cumulative. And the next window higher uh, which is the middle window, is the monthly GDX advance uh, decline cumulative, and it's cumulative volume. And there's a couple things I want to uh, point out. Uh, these, When these give signals, a lot of times they're multi-year. So this is not a short-term chart. And so far, um, what, what I want to really point out, uh, if you notice, if you go back to 2012, uh, both those indicators closed below the mid Bollinger Band, and that's your sell signal, and it stayed bearish all the way into 2016, and then they closed above the mid Bollinger Band. That's the blue line. When it closes below the mid Bollinger Band, it's the red line. So you can see, you know, it gave a signal in 2016, stayed long into uh, late 2017, gave a sell signal. Uh, then gave a buy signal back in 2019, gave a sell signal in 2021. And right now, uh, both indicators are still below the mid Bollinger Band. But I have uh, shaded uh, pink areas there uh, to identify times when this gets below 
uh, extreme lows, I guess you might say. The lowest has ever been was 2016 on the middle chart. Uh, it touched that level in 2018, but we've been in this yellow or this uh, pink area since 2021, kind of more or less kind of trended sideways here. Uh, we got above the mid Bollinger Band actually a couple of different times and kind of came back down. Uh, but I think once it, next time it turns up, probably going to just stay up. But we're in an important area according to history uh, because we're in that pink zone, this middle chart right now, the pink zone, which is, I think is a, a very oversold condition. A lot of times you get this oversold, do you really get good rallies out of it? <laughs> And the bottom window, which is advanced, or which is the up down volume, it actually got below the 2016 low. So it's really, on a historical level, extremely oversold. And it, too, right now is still below the mid Bollinger band. But uh, these are big time frames here. So once they do close above the mid Bollinger band, at some point they will, and we think will probably be sooner than later, they, they are late giving a buy signal. But they basically get majority of the rally. So even though they haven't uh, gave buy signals yet, but it slipped to chart three. So we are this, there. this is, uh, yeah, the chart three, you know, that was the previous chart, chart two, was the monthly time frame. This is the same indicator, but on a weekly time frame. And so they're, they're going to get shorter signals. These are multi month signals. Most of the time, they're usually anywhere from uh, two months to six month signals. So you'll get where the monthly charts may stay long for you know two, three, four years. Uh, the weekly cycles will give cycle in and out of uh, short term signals that may last a couple of months, uh, may stay a long or short, maybe six months. The last signal it gave on both signals or on both indicators, which is the up down volume cumulative and the advanced line cumulative was back in April of this year. It gave a sell signal as both close, or either one can close below it. Either one does, that's the signal. But uh, both turned down in April of, of this year. And now, for the first time, both are closing above the mid-Bollinger band. So, uh, I, I hear yeah. the music, so. Yeah, yeah, hang on, Tim, because I, I want to keep hearing some more about this. we got some few charts uh, yet to go through. Uh, folks, stay tuned. We'll right. be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord-Oracle.com. Go check him out. We'll be right back, folks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We are with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle, that is Ord-Oracle.com. We left off, we're looking at the GDX. Uh, Tim, are you still with us? Yep, I'm here. So Fantastic. Yeah, we can... We can continue so we looked at the uh, yearly gold going back to i think what 2005 wherever it was all the cycles works are uh, in sequence right now then we looked at the uh, monthly cumulative up down volume advanced client indicators that was chart two and both of them are extremely oversold uh on the monthly time frame they haven't closed above mid bollinger band but uh now we're looking at the weekly up-down volume advanced client indicators, and uh, now we have closed above the uh, mid-Bollinger band. So the weeklies are on a buy signal. Uh, I didn't show the dailies because the dailies actually flipped to a buy signal here, I don't know, a week or two ago. Uh, so they're more responsive, but they whip around longer or more. Uh, the, the weeklies are less whippy. But they're still a little bit late, so you didn't get in at the bottom. But most, once you get the, the weeklies turn up, you know, as, like I said, you don't get whipped around a lot. But I'm, I'm saying if we just start in a bicycle on the weeklies, most of those signals last at least two months, and a lot of them last six months. So this signal is probably good all the way into year end. So in general, we think we're probably going to move uh, in the uh, – all the way into year end. And if you flip back to chart number two um, for a second, anyhow, if the weeklies are on a bicycle and it runs into year end, the monthlies will flip to a buy signal because both indicators will be going up. So if the monthly flip to a buy signal, chances are this could be a multi year. Uh, buy signal currently going on. So this may uh, essentially go all the way into 2025, maybe 2026. Uh, so uh, so this could be a big signal. You know, the market's just been really kind of choppy uh, since 2021. We need an impulse wave to start. And these indicators suggest that's probably going to happen here over the next month or next couple of months. Uh, we're probably... On a bigger time frame, we're starting an impulse wave. And actually, that impulse wave, in my opinion, probably started last August. Uh, this consolidation we had down from the April high was just part of a, a bigger uptrend. But uh, uh, anyhow, we, we do think a multi-year probably rally is starting here. So, um, anyhow, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Yeah, fantastic. We, we can uh, – or you have questions on it? or No, or no, I think it's forward? just uh, – very convincing uh, analysis on that. Okay. Um, we can go to chart four. Okay. All right here we uh, have that we're going we're gonna to switch to uh, the S&Ps, both the four and chart five are on the S&Ps. And this is what I like to happen. This is a Zwag breath thrust indicator. And in a nutshell, it's the uh, advancing issues by total uh, issues and take that uh, and do a 10-day average. And so when it's 
it has to hit down 0.4 it has to run to 0.6 in 10 days in general that this mirrors what this wag breath stress indicator really does and so we did get a a reading below um uh, 0.4 here uh, about a week ago um and we need a run now to above 0.6 by October 19th, which is Thursday. And we're coming in right now around 0.53. So in general, for this to trigger, we need the market to actually continue to rally into uh, uh, this Thursday to trigger this indicator. Why is it important to trigger this indicator? This indicator is good for picking out intermediate term lows. If you notice, uh, I have the red and blue lines across the uh, chart and that tells you when the uh, swag breath friend, uh, swag breath stress indicators was triggered if you notice they all come at you know powerful bottoms and we had uh, three triggers back at that consolidation phase uh from uh, 2022 to 2023 all around that oh, uh, 4000 level on the uh, SPX and uh, you got three of them in that range. So that was a very bullish signal to get three uh, over that time period in a year. So that's the reason why it's kind of extremely bullish in that sideways consolidation because it triggered three breath thrust, uh, uh, you know, the zwag breath thrust. It, it did it three times. So that was a pretty powerful signal. I'm hoping it's going to do it coming into Thursday. If it does uh, do it in Thursday, it doesn't really need to, but if it does, it would add to the bullish picture because I'm thinking we're going to probably rally all the way to the, uh, to year end. Not saying we're going we're to have some mild consolidations along the way. We will. But uh, in general, that would be a powerful sign if this indicator can give above 0.6 by Thursday. And it's possible. You know, the market is off a little bit today, but if uh, Monday – or if uh, Wednesday and Thursday rally, that may trigger that point six area, and that's all we need. So will it do it? Not for sure. Um, we'll have to wait and see. But here's another indicator on page or uh, last go to pay or chart five, and uh, this is a, a ten day, uh, the second window up from the bottom is the uh, ten day average of the trend. And usually when it gets above uh, 0.2, it's, it's a bullish sign for the market. That's when uh, panic happens and a trend reading above 1.2 is usually a bullish sign because that's where uh, more selling, uh, in other words, volume goes into the down stocks. And that's usually a good sign. That's what bottoms are made of. And when it gets uh, down below 0.9, that's usually kind of a worrisome sign that the market uh, – has rallied too much too soon, and usually you get pullbacks. And all the red lines on this chart show the times when the trend was 0.9 or lower. Currently, we're at 0.86. Sometimes this um, can be a little bit early. Uh, so if we do rally this week, this is option expiration week, which normally has a bullish bias. And so we could possibly rally into Friday. Uh, even if we do, we'll probably have uh, next week down. Option expiration week normally leans bullish, so it's, it kind of has a bullish lean. And this indicator, even though it's 0.86 on the 10-day average, it can be it can delay a two, three day, you know, there, uh, before the that bearish signal trick uh, kicks in. So if the market does rally, I'm still thinking we're going to have a, a, a pullback. In the market, if it doesn't start maybe Friday, it'll probably start next week. Uh, so, how big the pullback will be, uh, don't know. It could be at worst case 4,200. We could test the previous low at worst, uh, but it would be a, a pullback that you should buy because the bigger trends up. I think we'll hit we'll hit new highs going to year end, and we're we're entering into one of the most uh, bullish seasonality periods. Uh, that start actually uh, after next week, uh, the end of October, the first of November, usually starts a really bullish seasonality. So, but it could be a little bit choppy between now and then. And I'm, I'm thinking, uh, so got to be a little bit careful here over the next couple of weeks. Absolutely, Tim. 
Thank you so much. Uh, really looking forward uh, to Tuesday to see if the uh, Zweig breath indicator, uh, or excuse me, the thrust, how that pulls out. And uh, just thank you so much for coming on. It's always a pleasure. All right. Thank you. Yep. Tim, have a good day. All right, folks. Be right back. Uh, just stay there. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Again, we were just speaking with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. That's Ord-Oracle.com. He'll be with us again on Thursday. Always a really fantastic insight. I want to take a look real quick at Apple. They're down a little bit. So essentially the news is, is that they're losing their market share dominance in China. Okay, Huawei is beating them uh, with their uh, Mate 60 Pro, and that uh, actually has a Chinese processor in it, uh, which is going to be um, pretty substantial for the Chinese people in the economy there. Um, really what happened is they had anticipated... Apple, I mean, had anticipated their iPhone 15 to be a pretty big juggernaut um, and be pretty dominant. Um, however, they're probably going to experience about, some analysts are looking at a double-digit decline in sales for the phone this year, um, which, you know, is, is pretty significant. Uh, the volume growth for the iPhone has been negative since the large, uh, launch of the latest model. Uh, initial reports previously showed that Apple cut production of the iPhone 15 by 8 million units Leading up to its official announcement, uh, Huawei phone sales in China experienced high double-digit growth in 2023, and that outpaced Apple amidst a slowdown in smartphone sales for the region. Uh, you know, 
And as more of these regions around China, uh, you know, develop a little bit more, um, you could see Huawei trying to push dominance into those countries as well, um, which obviously would be desirable for Apple to get in on. Um, so we might see a real competitor here um, to the iPhone in other parts of the world, which obviously make up the majority of the uh, consumer population. Uh, Huawei launched the Mate 60 Pro, uh, its latest high-end smartphone with a made-in-China processor. Um, it's not as advanced as, advanced as Apple's processor, but um, it's still pretty uh, advanced for China. So that's what we're seeing there. Uh, Disney closed in at about $86. We'll wait to see. It's got about four minutes to close. Um, we'll see if their attempts to try to climb back up work. Folks, thank you so much for joining me today. I'll be with you again Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Tom O'Brien will be back Monday. Hope you all have a great evening, and we'll see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. with Tommy. Take care now.